Hello great people, African Travel again and today is a wonderful day. I'm going to cover uh, the EV section. So my EV enthusiast today I uh, got you. So I'm going to interview one of the youngest uh, uh, GMs in the country uh, in a short while who runs a fleet of uh, commercial electric vehicles in Nairobi. Uh, I'll show you some uh, uh, the vans, how the size inside. Just stick around to get more details about the car. So let's meet uh, Mr. Brian Chege. Bro, how are you? Good, good. You good? Good, good, good to good. finally meet you, man. Thank you, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Mm. And uh, I was telling my guy, my, my fans that uh, you're among the youngest <laughs> GMs I've met in the country. Is it true? Um, well, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> How's your growth been like to, to where you are right now? Um, so I professionally, I'm a finance and investment professional. Uh, expert with okay. a background in private equity, uh -huh. but I've been involved with the private equity firm that is not only just a passive investor, but also heavily operationally involved. Mm. So, and in that breadth, we I get involved in a lot of the investments we make. Yeah, from a managerial point of view, and that is how you got to. <laughs> I've ended up being. <laughs> So we have not just been a GM for Meta, I've been a GM for many other businesses that Before are also investing. Yeah. Wow. So in this capacity, you've been here for how many years? Well, I've been uh, within this private equity firm right now for six years now. Six years. But I've been in management for three years now. For three years? Yeah. Man, you, you're such a <laughs> great hope for so many of the youth. Because <laughs> you. you're usually told uh, time, you take time, you know, experience, yeah. you need experience. Yes. But, um, I mean, it's always a learning curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, are you married? Uh, for, for, for my fans who <laughs> like to know, I know that's a question they like to know. No, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Yes, you so, that. guys. <laughs> You, got, you have to look for this electric vehicle. <laughs> yes, please. Come, come and lease one from us. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So tell us about um, uh, the current company that run Electric Meta. Yeah, so um, Meta Electric is basically, in a very short sentence, uh, B2B, mm -hmm. uh, business to business, yeah. uh, sales and leasing a company focused on commercial vehicles. Yeah. So um, what we do basically is we identify businesses with heavy transport, uh, with transport as a heavy aspect of the operations. Yeah. And we help them uh, capitalize on the savings the rest of the world is realizing around electric mobility by providing them with that solution in terms of electric mobility. So we come in, assess your transport needs um, yeah. and offer you a solution that is electric. So wow. say you have wow. a fleet of 60 vehicles that are running uh, let's say delivering food around Nairobi. Yeah. Um, we come and see, this is a, these are the vehicles you have, let's do this. Why don't you give you an electric vehicle and you end up saving 80% on your fuel. You end up saving up to uh, 70 to 80% again on maintenance. And you go green, enjoy the brand equity that comes with being uh, <laughs> part of the green movement in the rest of the world. Wow. Yeah. So, so currently you work with a number of companies in Nairobi, right? Yes, currently we work with a number of companies. Yeah. Um, our the first client that we signed, uh, I'm not at liberty to disclose the rest. Yeah. So we're still in the process. Yeah. The first client that we've signed through so far is uh, Kenyampia, yeah. uh, which is uh, I think the biggest bus company in yeah, Europe in right Europe, now. Yeah. So they're testing out uh, uh, the electric vehicle along the Athika Nairobi route. They hope that in the future they will replace. The, oh, the they will replace even the buses and all their vehicles right. with the electric. So Kenyampia, they have a, one of the highest number of fleet of buses, I think, applying uh, yes. thicker in uh, yes. Nairobi. We have some probably in Machakos, I don't know. They also do Machakos oh. and they also do Naivasha, but only for the flower farms. So, oh, so the question is, do you guys oh. not only deal with um, the vans, you can also deal with the buses, right? Yes, at the moment we've provided the vans in the yeah. market, but we're also in the process of bringing in buses and minivans for, ah. for different trials. I mean, the thing about this business is that you need to identify what your clients need first and then provide the solutions in terms of vehicle. Oh. It's not about getting the vehicle <laughs> and providing. It's, it's, oh, it's the other way around. around. Yes. Because ah, yes. you're not limited in terms of resources to bring in the yeah, buses. Yeah, we are not limited in terms ah. of resources for the vehicles. So we have to get down to the client level first mm -hmm. and now bring in the solution. Wow. Yeah. So um, uh, the other question is about uh, um, like I know the biggest challenge for electric vehicles is usually charging ports. 
Yeah. Like, um, do you guys have some charging stations around Nairobi? Um, so at the moment, the model we are using is we provide the clients once we ident once we identify a client, we mm -hmm. we provide the charging infrastructure around their operation. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if um, you run a delivery business out of a warehouse, yeah. say it's here in Karen, yeah. we will map out your delivery routes yeah. and using that mapping, we will identify where exactly you need to have these charges set up. So luckily the vehicles come with their own chargers, which are easy to set up. Yeah. So we can set up one either at the depot and map out the rest along the route. And that's why we are going with this, uh, we are first going with a B2B model and later going to a B2C model because B2B models have more predictable um, supply routes. Yeah. yeah, they have more predictable movement. You can be able to know at what point each vehicle will um, probably run out of range and need mm. an extra charge. So we can set it up that um. way. Yeah. Hopefully as we cluster more B2B yeah. um, routes in the future, we'll be able to create a... a a community of B2C electric B2C, drivers. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So, um, what are the main challenges people would like to know for electric vehicles yeah. in Kenya? Um, I mean, it's this, the main challenges of electric vehicles in Kenya is the same challenges it, all over the world. I mean, it's all around the buying cost, mm -hmm. um, the range of the vehicles, it's called range anxiety and the infrastructure around uh, charging. Yeah. So typically uh, electric vehicles are around uh, 50 to 80 percent more expensive than the equivalent petrol or diesel vehicle. So which is si sort of like puts off a lot of uh, yeah. interested parties. Uh -huh. And uh, Meta Electric is stepping in at this stage by uh, taking up that risk and buying the vehicles for all the businesses in Africa or in Kenya that are interested in the vehicles and yeah. offering it to them on a lease basis. Um, second is a range. Um, there's a lot of range anxiety. I remember when electric vehicles started, uh, some couldn't do up to 100 kilometers, but now yeah. we are seeing vehicles doing 300 to 500 kilometers. Um. So, and then the range problem also, uh, we are trying to solve it by trying to predict the driving patterns around the businesses that we are supporting and being able to set up um, charging spots for them as they drive along. And then an infrastructure, um, the infrastructure problem I like to say is a, is a chicken and egg um, situation. You need the vehicles on the road to develop the infrastructure. You need the infrastructure <laughs> on the road yeah, to have the true. vehicles at the same time. So we are prov as we provide more vehicles, we yeah. hope to cover, um, to develop the infrastructure further. But there is also support from a lot of local companies that really want to invest in the infrastructure side of it. KPLC and Kenjen have already started um, oh, so activities good. around uh, rolling out um, charging, uh, charging station stations with petrol stations. Uh -huh. I think most local investors are trying to do that around convenience stores and within apartments. So it's it's a good future. And yeah, I'd like to go back on the issue of cost also. Um, the cost issue is only in the short term. As battery technology becomes better in the future, yeah. the cost of EVs will reduce and more we would like we like to see that by 2027 the parity of a uh, small toyota and a small electric vehicle, vehicle will almost be, be the, the same, same. Yeah, in yeah because i've price. seen so many countries uh, mm. um, putting policy and measures in place to do away with the normal petrol and gas yes. uh, vehicles in mm. the the next 10 20 years yes yes do you think kenya is ready is getting ready for this not like people like you but mm. the government the system in place I mean, the government is ha, has its mind in the right place. I yeah. mean, last year, they uh, subsidized the excise duty by 50%. That is from 20% uh, to 10%. Although this has not been uh, implemented on the ground, right? But I feel it's a good step. Yeah. Um, CABS also, Kenya Bureau of Standard also came up with the with a standard around electric vehicles uh, mm -hmm. that is used especially in clearing at the port, yeah. um, which I think is a move in the right step. Yeah. Um, but we believe, we in the e-mobility community believe that there's a lot more to be done. We've seen uh, uh, people in Rwanda getting uh, complete tax, uh, tax breaks and tax uh -huh. exemptions. Um, if they're encouraging charging stations by offering uh, tax-free land to people who want to invest in that. Yeah. And in even other parts of the world, you're even incentivized by getting a tax credit for buying an electric vehicle. So 
I yeah. mean, there's a lot that is <laughs> they still a lot need to do. Still need to be done, but uh, I feel like the government is in the, looking in the right <laughs> the direction, direction. But they need to pick <laughs> up the pace. <laughs> I think. I think um, it's upon the government to have. Uh, creative and uh, people who are who have at the heart mm. uh, in this thing in the system just to push the agenda because yes. personally as I said to you I believe mm -hmm. um, the cost of living will get better uh, the minute we reduce the consumption of oil around yeah. the world and mm. uh, also just a, a, a beautiful air that we breathe in yeah, just uh, as you said it reduces the minute we go to we go electric mm. uh, will reduce uh, atmospheric uh, pollution by 25% yeah, or something. That's true. I mean, I was telling you, the um, other than the uh, reduction of the carbon emissions, I mean, yeah. if you look at the amount of money, amount of dollars Kenya has to buy every day to import oil, yeah. while we produce excess electricity that can be used to power vehicles, it's a bit... Uh, it, it's it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> and well, we pay for the lost uh, electri uh, electricity. We pay for that. That's why our electricity costs are so high. We produce uh, almost 2,400 megawatts. Yeah. We consume only 1,700 megawatts. That is so during the, the 500. day. And even at night, it goes down to 1,000 megawatts. So all wow. that produced electricity the that excess. is uh, not consumed, we end up paying for it in our bills. Well, while if we m try to hasten the pace of electric mobility adoption, yeah we can uh, use this excess electricity to power electric vehicles mm -hmm. and reduce our reliance on dollars for oil. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a win-win for both the government yeah. and you as a consumer. So, wow. so that's, that's just an interesting fact. That, uh, yeah, the other, the other question I have is, um, have you thought about venturing into the motorcycle business as well? Yeah, we have a, a parallel business that is looking at uh, uh, two wheelers mm -hmm. and three wheelers. Yeah, I think that is it is that is the point where electric mobility will pick up the fastest in Africa uh -huh. because that is where the savings are immediately realized yeah. by the end consumer. Uh, we believe that uh, when in the two three wheeler sections, the border driver at the end of the day should be able to take home at least up to 40 to 50 percent more on a daily basis. On a daily basis, just saving yeah, on and, the fuel. And that's on the fuel only and then uh, even the maintenance also of the bike, they will they will reduce a lot of costs on changing oil and pumps every other mm. day well, when, the, when the bike is just powered by a battery <laughs> and, uh, and a motor. So mm. yeah, we are looking at that in parallel, but yeah. it's still a work in progress. At the moment, the four wheelers are the ones that have taken the forefront. Yes. Wow, thank mm -hmm. you. So I really like your office, man. This place looks amazing. You know, it mm -hmm. looks really chilling and relaxing. <laughs> and I think it helps a lot in terms of creativity. This is what we want Nairobi to be. And <laughs> to it's be all electric like. vehicles. <laughs> 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 man. So I would like to see how the electric vehicle works. We yeah. can. Can we do a test or something? Sure, sure, sure. We can do that. I yeah. think it's just out here. Yeah, it's out here. So guys, yes. let's yeah. go and set. As you go to the van, I just mm -hmm. wanted to know, uh, what is the battery capacity? Um, so it's a 50.3 kilowatt hour battery. Uh -huh. On a full charge, it should be able to give you 300 kilometers. 300 kilometers? Yes. Wow. wow. And, uh, 90, 94 BHP. I think you'll really enjoy the talk as it drives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. for, 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 for a van, the talk is quite amazing. Ah. Yes. Yes. And the capacity in terms of carrying capacity? So in the back you have a huge cargo space uh, yeah. with a payload of 0.78 tons, that's mm -hmm. 780 kgs. And wow. then it can carry up to 4 cubic meters of cargo. 4 cubic meters yeah. of cargo? Yeah, there is a different version of this also that can be refitted to have 4 seats mm. at the back, so you make a 5-seater vehicle. Yeah. It's called the M3. Yeah, so and uh, the battery is at the floor of the vehicles. And ah. the front is almost similar, which you see with the battery management system and yeah. the coolants. Ah. So, but uh, yeah, okay, I'll give it let, a let, try. Let, let, let me, let, let's check, let's check from the inside. The 
start engine. Mm. Then you took it to step on the brakes. Yeah. Wow. Look at these guys. <laughs> so they guess <laughs> where do you, where do you put us reverse? So you just up. Just huh? pull it on the side mm -hmm. and push it up. And push it up. Yes. It's engaged. Oh, so I can see R. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's so where's simple. The, where's the foot brake? Foot brake is there. Oh. Hand, hand brake is this one. Oh, this is the hand brake. Yeah. Or you just press this button. Oh. To go back to parking. Mm. Parking. You just push it up. Uh huh. To go back to reverse mode. Oh, okay. So it's simple. You just it's like a small toy up down up, up down. down. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. So I want to go back. I uh, reverse. Oh, yes. Up. Yeah. Okay. Oh. okay. I can't see well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's super quiet. It's super quiet. You can feel it. I can only hear the AC. Yeah. Oh. Oh, the brakes are really strong. Yeah. Once you so drive. Power, it has regenerative braking. Wow. And when you brake, it's also charging. So you say it goes up to 300 kilometers? Yeah, it goes up to 300 kilometers. Uh -huh. So the maximum speed uh, is 100 uh, kilometers per hour. Uh, per hour, but that is programmable. Uh -huh. Just set it because like that because it's a commercial vehicle. We can adjust the setting to, um, to, the, to push the maximum speed higher. Oh. The beauty about this car is that it's uh, it's very programmable. It's uh, oh. it's connected to the internet. Yeah. So you can change a lot of set settings by just plugging in a USB and programming the vehicle. Yeah. You can even monitor the costs. You can even monitor the power consumption. You can monitor driver behavior, um, weight on the on the vehicle, battery, uh, tire pressure, and the whole thing can be controlled from a simple utility as your tablet. Or what? Phone. Yes, that's the beauty about what? electric vehicles. Makes fleet management very easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so many so many of the guys would like to have such a mm. capability, but uh, yeah, but they, they have to install a lot of extras and go the whole length of spending so much money to install trackers and uh, mm. speed governors. And while well, in an electric vehicle, this can all be con programmed and controlled and controlled your, from your phone, from the foot of your phone. Yeah. Ah. So does it need a special driving um, for this? Because I no. feel like it's super easy. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm, I have been driving this uh, van for 10 years. It feels like a small car. It actually don't feel, it doesn't feel like I'm driving, you know, a van or something. Yeah. It just feel like very easy for smooth, anybody. Easy yeah. Mm. Oh. It's oh. a very smooth and easy drive. Mm. More often than not, yeah. uh, we ask the drivers to come for a training before we issue out the vehicles because they tend to get excited and forget it's a van. The quiet nature of it and the, and the power, the electric power that uh, powers the drivetrain uh, makes it a very, very powerful vehicle. Mm. So more often than not, drivers can get excited and end up like, getting into, into a problem. So we try to train them. Mm. to get used to the electric drivetrain before we issue up the vehicles. Oh. Yeah. So guys, let's go for a road drive test. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And the peak is amazing. The peak is amazing. <laughs> Warren 
Rafi has some shares in the company. Yes, he's a major shareholder in BYD. Wow. Yeah. wow. Wow. And one of the biggest suppliers also of buses across the world. Really? Public buses, yeah. Public, Public buses. buses uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And do, do you think uh, we'll get to a point where we'll have uh, manufacturers like electric manufacturers or common manufacturers in Kenya? Okay, it's possible. Yeah. I mean, we have assembly capacity. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, it's a bit expensive because our energy costs and taxes are a bit high. Ah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Our cost of assembly in Kenya will end up being uh, higher than the cost of importing a full unit. So, I mean, it's also something for the government to try and incentivize that capability by reducing taxes and giving incentives on the costs of energy to allow us to build a local manufacturing and assembly capacity for electric vehicles. I actually am usually surprised because uh, the government has invested a lot in terms of um, um, natural electric uh, I don't know, sources or something. Renewable. The renewable, and I'm looking for yeah. that word. Yeah. But still, the cost is not going down every day. Just uh, here, electric uh, prices have gone up. I don't know. I mean, yeah, like I said, Kenya is one, actually, one surprisingly one of the only countries that has uh, almost 80 percent, 87 percent uh, of its power is renewable. Yeah. You need hydro, geothermal, exactly. or wind, yeah. or solar. And um, I mean, the cost of uh, the cost of electricity or energy being so high is more about a lot of inefficiencies in the system because the cost of production of renewable energy is quite low. Exactly, we have a lot of inefficiencies in the system that make it um, very expensive for us. So um, I think um, there is more that can be done uh, when it comes to looking at it from that angle. And. Uh, EVs that can be part of the solution. Can be part of the solution to uh, enable us to consume more of the power that we produce. Yeah. Well, so your the target for uh, electric matter. What is your what are your goals uh, in the long term? In the long term, we want to uh, be one of the biggest uh, fleet owners and suppliers of electric vehicles in the region. Yeah. Um, we are hoping to up our fleet numbers by uh, almost from next year we are hoping to go up to 50 to 100 vehicles every other month wow. that we can be able to provide to the market and in, in the near term we also want to move away from b2b yeah. and also support b2c clients the local monenchi wants to have uh, an electric vehicles and save on the fuel costs that we incur. Uh, yeah. wow. and we're, we're also looking at uh, beyond uh, like we, we spoke earlier, beyond just vehicles, we want to go into two wheelers and three wheelers. That is tuk tuks and border borders. And border borders. Yeah. Uh. And further, we also hope to repurpose these batteries <laughs> yeah. and use them in other uh, capacities, maybe in lighting and home, 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 uh, home use. Home use, or it could be even public use. I mean, in in the UK, you have all vehicle batteries being used to power stadiums. Which oh, so you basically mean. The old, the old batteries. The old batteries can be repurposed ah. to do something else. Wow, wow, wow. That, that is new the, 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 the future is, uh, electric. is electric. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So guys, uh, what do you think? Just uh, leave a comment, uh, subscribe, and share. What you need to have is uh, power. Oh, so this is a type. This is a very unique. It's it's, a, but you can get it. Uh, you, you you can get this outlet out of any electric shop. Oh, on an electric shop. Uh. Yeah. And this is an AC charger. Mm. You plug it in at the front. I didn't ask you a very important question. How long does it take to charge? Um, this AC charger takes seven hours to charge. Yeah. And there's another DC charger that takes two hours, to ch uh, one and a half hours. To so charge. this takes seven hours. This takes seven hours. And another one takes uh, one and a half. Hours. One and a half. Yeah. Ah. Wow. And this I can plug it anywhere. You can plug it anywhere. It's pretty ah. simple. You just need the converter. It's like an adapter that you have for the iPhone. Wow. <laughs> just need something that will convert this to the normal inlet. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So guys, we come to the end of our shoot today mm -hmm. and uh, you guys have learned a lot as well as I did. And uh, yeah, as I come to the end of the show, I would like to, uh, um, Mr. Brian, yes. uh, just to give the youth um, a word. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you being uh, an MD at your age, mm -hmm. it's not something that so many youth would like to 
we look up to, up to you mm -hmm. and uh, we'd like to know just the secret of your success at uh, this age mm -hmm. and the other one what are the goals for the company yeah uh, the long-term goals for the company uh, uh, thanks a lot for the interview thank um, you well what i would say <laughs> you put me on the spot what i would say <laughs> to the youth out there i mean yeah it's always find a passion and work on it and double down on it yeah um, don't lose focus just always keep pushing it um, don't don't feel like time is against you because um, every 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 outcome has its own time so always just focus on what drives you focus on the passion and stay at it double down on it every day wake up looking forward to it and so, uh, so yes. basically you said focus Focus, find a passion, focus on it, and double down on it. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> I hope so many of you guys will yeah. take the, st the steps you took as well. Yeah. And yeah, thank you. So yeah. what about, what are the long-term goals so go goal for Meta Electric? Meta -electric. Yeah. So um, first of all, I'd like to say that we are very proud to be the front runners in this space, yeah. in commercial vehicle leasing with a focus on EVs. Yeah. And uh, we want to be able to assist as many businesses out there to make the switch from uh, petrol and diesel engine to electric vehicles. The cost savings are real and uh, the, the climate impact and the brand equity are also very positive for the businesses. So the goal for us is to as reach out as many, to as many businesses out there that are in the logistics e-commerce business and yeah. require such commercial vehicles for any um, utilities. And once we're able to reach out to all these businesses, we hope that through them we'll be able to develop the infrastructure for um, the local Mwananchi who also wants to own an electric vehicle and also develop the infrastructure. So um, the future is electric and the future is here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you, thank you so much. Thanks. So that that marks the end of our day today, and uh, yeah, the future is electric, and the, the future is today, and uh, the future is here. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. See you guys. <laughs>